leaving the room when possible. Uh, order, order. I call Bob Blackman. Thank, thank you, Mr Paisley, and a, a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship, I think for the first time. Uh, can I, uh, I beg to move that the House has considered the UK and Israel trade negotiations. Uh, and I declare inter my interest up front. I'm the chairman of the all-party parliamentary group for Israel. Uh, and indeed, just over the last year, we released a, uh, an excellent report, which I would commend to my honourable friend, the Minister, on the health tech uh, uh, facilities and uh, part of our industries. It's a very good read and demonstrates the importance of Israel-UK negotiations and uh, having that set up. And indeed, uh, we are just about to release a report on research and innovation, which I would commend uh, for the Minister to, to read as well. And indeed, of course, um, our partnership on the tech front uh, extends to the fact, of course, we have the Israel Tech Hub in the embassy in Tel Aviv. Um, and indeed, I was talking this morning um, to uh, the all-party parliamentary group for Romania, who want to mirror the tech hub and demonstrates that not only is this relationship between the UK and Israel good for the UK and Israel, but it also means that we can set up similar arrangements for like-minded countries across Europe and across the world. So I welcome the government's commitment to uh, further strengthen the ties with Israel, and indeed, uh, uh, which is, of course, a close friend and ally of the United Kingdom. It is, of course, pertinent that we're having this debate because I know that very shortly we'll be embarking on new trade talks to enhance the trade relationship with Israel still further, which I think is extremely welcome. And I will also thank the Backbench Business Committee, on which I sit, uh, for granting uh, this debate. I'm not sure that were, whether that had anything to do with it, uh, but uh, uh, I suspect possibly it did. Uh, I, I note uh, my honourable friend from across the way who's got a season ticket uh, at uh, the Backbench Business Committee is here uh, as well. But not only uh, is Israel the sole democracy in the Middle East, uh, it is a true global high-tech startup powerhouse with huge prowess in the fields of high-tech, energy, medical science, fintech and cyber security, to name but a few. Now, the UK is Israel's largest trade partner in Europe and the third largest in the world. That gives us something to aim at. We want to be the, 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 the largest in the world with, with Israel. Given the strength of the relationship, it's perhaps little surprise that Israel was amongst the first countries that the UK agreed a free trade agreement in principle in January 2019 on our departure from the EU. After successive record-breaking years, the UK-Israel trade has remained healthy, even during the pandemic, uh, with an estimated value of £5 billion. And whether it's pharmaceuticals and plastics to fintechs or agritech, the UK-Israel trade relationship covers all our major industries and has a natural focus on the technology and services of the future. And that's a, uh, that's a key reason why there are boundless opportunities for improvements and opportunities in the UK-Israel uh, trade relationship. Now, the signing of a uh, a strategic agreement with Israel last November was an important start in the process. And in our ever-strengthening bilateral, uh, that is the, uh, the next step to negotiate the full post-Brexit trade deal, which we want to see uh, with our friends in Israel. So we are natural trade partners. Uh, as progressive liberal democracies, our nations share the same values and commitment to the open and free market. Israel's business community regards the UK as the gateway to Europe. The UK is an appealing market. We have a shared language and an estimated 85% of Israelis speak English uh, as uh, their first language. Close proximity, obviously, to Israel and an enterprising business culture. Israeli businesses regard the UK market in the highest regard. And we have seen many of them achieve great success here. And I'll go through one or two of them as we go through this debate. But Israel's tech ecosystem doesn't just provide economic benefits to our two great nations. Every day, Israeli businesses will be enriching and improving the lives of British citizens and making them healthier. The cab driver who, or parent on the school run using Israeli satnav uh, waze to uh, efficiently complete their journey. The water engineer being alerted to a leak in the network by a startup based in Tel Aviv, Takadu. The shopper buying cherry tomatoes 
in the local supermarket, an invention from Israel. And I could go on about many other aspects. The many people from my constituency issued generic uh, prescription drugs from their local GP surgery manufactured by Israeli pharmaceutical giant Teva, who produced an extraordinary one in six prescription drugs used in the NHS. And that fails to scratch even the surface of Israeli companies operating in the UK. There are 500 Israeli companies operating in the UK, employing thousands of individuals of our constituents. A number of UK companies have major operations in Israel, including Barclays, Rolls-Royce, Glaxo, SmithKline Beecham, and Unilever. Rolls-Royce were responsible for the UK's largest ever export deal to Israel back in 2016, when they signed a £1 billion agreement with Israel airline Al Al to provide Trent 1000 engines for Al Al's new fleet of Dreamliner aircraft. A British visitor to Israel couldn't fail to notice the ever-growing number of UK-manufactured cars in the Jewish state. Now, in terms of high-tech, the rapid expansion of UK-Israel trade over the last decade has closely fail, uh, followed Israel's emergence as one of the world's leaders in high-tech. The country is now home uh, to the highest density of startups anywhere in the world, which impressed me because I thought India was. But therefore, uh, clearly, Israel is more dense in that respect, but deservedly earning its title as the startup nation. It is also home to the world's major technology powerhouses, including Google, Microsoft, Intel, and Motorola. I've had the privilege of visiting Israel on a number of occasions uh, with the conservative friends of Israel, and the dynamism and forward-thinking nature of its high-tech sector and the young entrepreneurs is palpable. I particularly remember visiting an early electric vehicle pioneer back in 2011. Remember 2011? 11 years ago. Uh, where, as is often the case, the Israeli company was many years ahead of the market. And the only thing holding them back was battery technology at the time. Israel has achieved this with intellectual power in the face of geographic and geopolitical disadvantages, conflict, and a lack of natural resources. Another reason why uh, behind Israel's success story is that the country is an investor in R&D, spending as much as 4.9% of its GDP on R&D in 2018. That's more than double that of the UK. Uh, so uh, nothing, something else that we should uh, think about and offers us very serious thought, uh, food for thought. Increasing trade with Israel has been a long-standing UK objective. The UK-Israel Tech Hub, which I've mentioned in the British Embassy in 2011, was the first of its kind to promote partnerships in technology and innovation between our two countries. It has successfully generated hundreds of tech partnerships between our two countries and so far is worth more than £85 million, and has led to the additional tech hubs in India, Indonesia, Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, and Brazil, and I trust soon to be Romania. Um, in terms of the opportunities, uh, Brexit has presented us with an exciting opportunity to negotiate a bespoke UK-Israel free trade agreement. Our two nations are closer than ever and share the same values and outlook on international trade. There are endless possibilities available for the UK and Israel to work together to become the world's leading tech centres, and I encourage my honourable friend, the Minister, to be ambitious in the forthcoming negotiations. The Trade Continuity Agreement, which was signed in February 2019, ensured the continuation of the trade terms covered by the EU-Israel Association Agreement. This should be the bare minimum we seek to, uh, uh, which we seek to negotiate in the new UK-Israel trade deal. Now, the International Trade uh, Secretary uh, said last month that her department would be opening a public consultation on this important free trade agreement this January. We don't have long to go, uh, Minister, so uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking for... Uh, 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 I don't want to hear soon, either, uh, as, as an answer. Given the importance of the UK-Israel uh, bilateral, I wonder if the Minister is able to actually shed some light on uh, the commencement date. And I very ho much hope that the starting gun will be fired in the forthcoming days. Now, I know many colleagues in, uh, in this place are looking forward to the UK hosting a joint innovation summit with Israel in March. 
uh, this year. But I wonder whether the Secretary of State has any plans to visit Israel in the near future to see for herself the many trade opportunities emerging from this tech powerhouse. I trust that she will visit and that uh, that can kick off the negotiations properly. Now, my honourable friend has spoken uh, of the UK's desire to expand opportunities in financial services, infrastructure and technology. So can he provide a, an update on the progress of these sector-specific uh, ambitions? Now, the UK and Israel can boast the world's two most successful COVID-19 vaccination programmes, a source of great personal pride to both countries. Our beloved NHS has delivered a vaccination programme at a speed and scale that is truly the envy of the world. Israel's digitised healthcare system played an instrumental role in that success. The International Trade Department has previously expressed the desire to seek a trade deal with a chapter focused on advanced digital data and technology, including Meditech. So can my honourable friend, the Minister, assure me that this remains the plan and what discussions he's had with his counterpart in Israel on this subject? Now, Israel's success in R&D is commendable. So will the Minister please consider using free trade negotiations to explore a binational research and development programme to the mutual benefit of both countries? Israel has such a programme in place with the United States, known as BIRD, and cumulative sales of products co-developed by Israel and American companies through BIRD have exceeded $10 billion. Given the immediate strategic challenge posed by disruptive actors on the international stage, it's more important than ever that we work with trusted allies to produce the technologies of the future. And as we move to deliver on our net zero commitments, I call on my Honourable Friend the Minister to work closely with Israel. The country has been known as the superpower of sustainability. While we, may not, we won't be able to recreate here the solar tower uh, harnessing the Negev sunshine to generate electricity, we can certainly learn much from Israel's world-leading water reuse programme to avoid future droughts. Now, the UK and Israel boast sector-leading green tech and agri-tech start-ups and there's many opportunities to expand this. It is with this ambition in mind, I also call on the Minister to seize the opportunity given from the historic Abrahamic Accords, which have ushered in a groundbreaking new chapter for peace in the Middle East between Israel and her neighbours in Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates. Now, while the Accords have been in effect for less than two years, they've already had a seismic effect on the region in terms of trade, investment, and, uh, which is rapidly expanded. The breakthrough Water for Energy deal signed between Jordan and Israel, which was brokered by the UAE, demonstrate that this peace is far-reaching and gives us tentatively an opportunity for proper peace in the Middle East. So I hope that the UK will actively consider the ways in which we can support these new links and use our own strong relationships in the region to further build on the Abrahamic uh, Accords. Now, in terms of the challenges... Um, the governments obviously prioritised the relationship with Israel and put in place frameworks to stimulate collaboration. But there's much more to, that we can do to ensure Israeli companies make the UK their natural first stop international, internationally to trial and scale their products. Now, I had the pleasure of releasing the shot in the arm, Israel and the UK's health tech innovation via the all-party parliamentary group for Israel's uh, group and the UK Israel business. Now, the report identifies several impediments which specifically are facing Israeli health tech companies seeking to enter the UK market. Now, many of those proposals, however, will work across different sectors as well. For example, the report recommends creating new UK-based landing pads to assist Israeli companies touching down in the United Kingdom. This should include advice on how best to position their value proposition and achieve adoption at pace and scale in the UK. Now, another challenge facing Israel, Israeli startups are the constraints imposed by short-term visas. Uh, we contend that as part of the Israel-UK landing pad, startups selected and incubated through the scheme should be automatically awarded a startup visa as part of the scheme. Now, a visa uh, awarded to landing pad companies would be time-bound by the landing pad's programme horizon. 
a scheme that already takes into account other critical factors such as capital requirements, <coughs> pilot testing, as well as scale horizons. So will my honourable friend uh, take time to read the report, consider the recommendations and hopefully act upon them? Now whilst there's much to celebrate our, about our burgeoning trade relationship with Israel, it would be remiss of me not to quickly touch upon the so-called boycott, divestment and sanction movement, or BDS, as it's more commonly known. Simply, BDS is a harmful, politically motivated campaign which seeks to delegitimize Israel. BDS does nothing to advance the Palestinian cause. In actuality, it's anti-peace. I applaud the government for its rejection of BDS and its clear commitment to, e to ever greater trade with Israel. The fact that many of those targeting Israel with economic bo boycotts also actively seek to extend their harmful boycotts to those in the cultural and educational spheres says everything you need to know. Um, it's unthinkable to me that anyone could seek to minimise, for example, collaboration between the UK and Israeli scientists in tackling some of the greatest health challenges facing our societies, including Alzheimer's, COVID-19 and Parkinson's disease. It's deeply regrettable that Ben and Jerry's, the ice cream makers, which are owned by British company Unilever, have engaged in their own recent boycott of Israel. The controversial move rightly provoked strong condemnation, and I call on Unilever to challenge such harmful uh, measures. Now, the government's forthcoming legislation to stop public bodies across the UK from discriminating on the ground of country and territory of origin must feature provisions to prevent procurement policy being used as a tool of foreign policy or an attempt to regulate international trade. Now, legislating on this important manifesto commitment will be warmly welcomed by many of my constituents. And I call on my honourable friend, the Minister, to work closely with colleagues in the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities uh, to counter discriminatory policies which are harmful not just to community, community cohesion here in the UK, but also harm the UK's trade interests and foreign policy goals. Now, the UK's government's uh, response to BDS by seeking ever closer economic relations with Israel is commendable. Now is the time to go one step further and ensure the principles of fairness and non-discrimination are enshrined in the heart of the UK's public procurement regime. Now, having experienced a decade of record-breaking growth in trade, the UK and in Israel are natural partners across a wide range of innovative fields, from finance to agricultural technology, spanning government, the private sector, and higher education. We have therefore before us an, an invaluable opportunity to reshape our trading relationship for the future. The UK-Israel trade deal is not only much, much anticipated for its many important economic benefits, but it also presents an opportunity for the UK to expand its ever-tightening relationship with a very close ally. Now, given Israel's status as a world leading tech power, it's important that the UK makes the most of the many advantages this offers by taking an ambitious approach to trade negotiations. Done right, this deal can serve as a model for UK partnerships with other advanced innovative intensive states, including South Korea, Singapore and Taiwan. Myself and colleagues stand ready to support work on an enhanced trade agreement and I hope that the Minister can assure me and my friends that we will, the call for input is about to begin and we can look forward to an excellent free trade deal with our friends in Israel.